Antibiotics. The objectives will be to identify commonly used medications and agents, recommended doses, routes of administrations, side and adverse effects for um, antibiotics. Microbiology review terms include gram-positive and gram-negative organisms. Gram-positive have a cell wall and stain purple with a gram stain. Gram-negative do not stain purple with a gram stain. Instead, they stay reddish pink like the rest of the stain. Microbiology terms antibacterial include substances that inhibit bacterial growth or kill bacteria. And then the antimicrobial one is for any microorganism. Antibiotic is produced by another microorganism to kill or impair organisms causing infections. Bacteriostatic drugs inhibit the growth of bacteria, um, things like tetracycline and sulfonamides. Bactericidal kill bacteria, so we end up with penicillins and cephalosporins. Nosocomial infections, also known as hospital-acquired infections, need to be talked about when we talk about um, antibiotics because so many um, hospital-acquired infections or um, nursing home or whatever facility you're in, so facility healthcare acquired infections, occur um, and some of them are antibiotic resistant, so we need to um, talk about those. Culture and sensitivity. This is the sensitivity that the organism, if the organism is sensitive to that antibiotic, then the organism will be killed off in large numbers by that antibiotic. You can see here the little disc is the antibiotic on the top. So this one, the organism is really sensitive to this antibiotic, whereas down here it's not very sensitive at all. Definitely I want to be on the sensitive antibiotic. Narrow spectrum antibiotics um, are primarily effective against one bacteria. They're like shooting a dart at a dartboard. They include penicillin and erythromycin. Broad spectrum antibiotics, rather than a dartboard, it's more like a shotgun. They're effective against gram positive and gram negative. Um, examples include tetracycline and cephalosporins, frequently used to treat infections when um, the um, offending microorganism has not been identified. So broad spectrum antibiotics will often be used until sensitivities return. Multi-antibiotic therapy is used um, to be quite effective um, and it can be used to treat a bacterial illness um, where you need um, a little help um, but it also decreases the risk of um, antibiotic resistance. Re-explore the additive versus synergistic ideas. Additive, the effect is the same as adding the two together, like Lego blocks. Synergistic, the effect of the product is greater than the two of them added together, like a trampoline. Antibacterial allergic reactions are common. Be prepared for them. Mild reactions include rash, pruritus, hives. Severe include bronchospasm, laryngeal edema, vascular collapse, and cardiac arrest. If you're dealing with someone with a severe reaction, you need to get the doc, get them now, and then prepare to administer epinephrine. I'm going to skip over this slide. So um, sometimes when people are on antibiotics or they're on chemo or they're, they've got HIV, their normal flora, which I refer to as the parents, um, are, are killed off. And so what we're left with is a bunch of rowdy teenagers causing problems, which I call C. diff. Um, common treatment includes flagyl and uh, vanco or cipro and flagyl. It's a flagyl combo that's used. People at risk are people with AIDS, those taking antibiotics, those on chemotherapy, healthcare workers, and those in the hospital. We must wash hands after leaving the room of a patient in isolation for this. Hand sanitizer does not work for C. diff. Um, you can eat yogurt on most antibiotics to reduce your risk of C. diff. Don't eat the yogurt at the same time as the antibiotic because it will 
um, interfere with the absorption of the antibiotic. However, um, eat it in between antibiotics. Many antibiotics can cause organ toxicity like kidney, liver, and ear or ototoxicity. Note that erythromycin and other macrolides are famous for liver problems. Some IV antibiotics can cause extravasation. An example of this is vancomycin. Vancomycin is a horrible vesicant. Some drug-drug interactions. Alcohol and cephalosporins combined can cause a disulfurum reaction, also called antabuse reaction. Fluoroquinolones combined with steroids increase the risk of tendon rupture, but fluoroquinolones in and of themselves can cause a tendon rupture. The following drugs can interfere with antibiotics and should not be taken with them. Things like Tums, vitamins, minerals, and caraphate. Also note that many antibiotics will increase bleeding tendencies and um, blood thinners will often have interferences with antibiotics. So different antibiotic actions. Penicillins and cephalosporins work in a similar way. They rupture the cell membrane. Penicillins are alike in that they have um, a beta-lactam ring in their chemical structure um, that they can break apart. Psyllin is often in their generic name. So these penicillins have beta-lactamase, which goes in and it busts up those rings. It actually acts kind of like a ring cutter. Penicillinase-resistant penicillins are used to treat penicillin um, penicillin ace producing staph aureus, also known as anti-philococcal um, penicillins like dicloxacillin, nafcillin, and oxacillin. So just know that there are um, the basic penicillins we've got resistant organisms to. And so we've made other medications um, so that um, they can fight um, those organisms that are resistant to the very first generation that were made. Resistance to antibiotics. When you don't take your antibiotic until it's all gone, it can contribute to antibiotic resistance. When you are on long-term antibiotics, you could develop an antibiotic resistance. So there's an optimal time period in which you need to take them, and your doctor will prescribe that for you. Some famous antibiotic-resistant organisms include MRSA, VRE, and ESBL. Cross-resistance is resistance to the effect of an antibiotic because of previous exposure to another similar antibiotic. Penicillin nursing interventions include checking the culture and sensitivity before the drugs are given, monitor for bleeding, Monitor closely during the first dose. Increase fluids. Take one hour before or two hours after a meal. Check for super infection and consider safety issues. With cephalosporins, we look at some side effects like puritis and GI distress with high doses, increased bleeding, seizures, nephrotoxicity. Definitely not pleasant. There are also drug-drug interactions. Alcohol may cause flushing, dizziness, headache, nausea, vomiting, and muscular cramps, otherwise known as a disulfurum reaction. In other words, there is a hypersensitivity to the alcohol. With uricosyrix, cephalosporins decrease, um, the cephalosporin excretion is decreased. Nursing interventions for cephalosporins include assessing for allergy, performing CNS before therapy, assessing renal and liver function, administering IV over 30 minutes, um, monitor for super infection, um, and for safety, keep out of reach of children. Watch the CEPHs really close. Many of them are look-alike, sound-alike drugs. Please look at these. They look very similar. One is ceftazidime, and the other one is cefepime. 
I am ceftriaxone is something called rocephin. It can really hurt. A lot of the cefts can hurt. So if you're going to give them I am, please ask if you can give that with 1% lidocaine. Odds and ends of te tetracyclines. Tetracycline side effects include a discoloration of forming teeth, decreased effectiveness of oral birth control, and many of them are taken with a full glass of water on an empty stomach. With tetracyclines, um, we do, we can eat yogurt, but not at the same time. It will really decrease your absorption um, a very great amount um, with the tetracyclines. In the um, note cards, the antibiotic note cards, we go into macrolides, aminoglycosides, tetracyclines, and fluoroquinolones. Thank you, and have a good day. Best wishes on your test.